All right, well, it is a pleasure to have you join me here for the first story time with Deadpool. Does everybody here like stories? Woo! Shout out the name of your favorite story. Toy Story. A lot of Deadpools, not a lot of creativity, huh? <laughs> All right, well, I did hear one, and I think we'll go with that recommendation. Because I heard it, and not because that's what was actually scheduled by my manager, this story is a beloved bedtime favorite, and it was mashed up with a very profitable licensing agreement. This story is Cinderpool. You didn't all cheer for that. That's not a good start. It's too late now. <laughs> the stigmatism is not a joke. <laughs> Once upon a time. You know, it just doesn't feel right when I do that with myself. We should all say those magical words together. Ready? Once upon a time. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Cinderpool lived in a big mansion with his step professor and step mutants. The biggest of those step mutants, Colossus, was always making up silly rules around the house. He said things like, make sure you close the window while the air conditioner is on. And for the love of Feige, stop Donald ducking around the house. What is wrong with you? Put some pants on. <laughs> Anyway, the other step mutant, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, who has two fans here today, <laughs> she was always texting and rolling her eyes. She was so Gen Z. Both of those step mutants were very jealous of Cinderpool because Cinderpool had a much, much larger fan base than they did. That's right. Nobody came to Colossus's story hour. <laughs> One day, an expendable non union extra went running in front of the mansion screaming. King Thanos was having the biggest battle of phase three. <laughs> and we all know that was the last good phase. <laughs> Cinderpool desperately wanted to go to the battle, but Colossus said, No. <laughs> it is too dangerous, and you are not a good part of the team. Then he rips apart Cinderpool's favorite costume, and Negasonic blasts it with her powers. He was so cool, so Gen Z, <laughs> so... On fleek, no cap, Sigma, Skibbity, Ohio. <laughs> I don't know what any of those words mean. Cinderpool was distraught, vulnerable and exposed as he stumbled out onto the mansion grounds. But then he looked up and saw, beginning to form, a magical golden sparkle circle. And out of that sparkle Whoa. circle, Circle stepped his fairy hairy god mirror, Wolverine! Woo! I love you, Wolverine! He loves me. Me too. <laughs> oh, fairy god mutant Wolverine! I desperately want to go to the big battle, but my mean step mutant said I can't get a can you Shut up, dude! He said lovingly. <laughs> I can't go to the battle if I don't have a costume. You're my fairy god mutant. You do something with a magic wand and a pumpkin. Do me a favor. Stop writing me into these stories. God. Thanks for the advice, Wolvie. So Australian. Cinderpool went over to the costume department, grabbed a new freshly laundered costume, and headed to the big battle. He was late because he had to read every page of the terms and conditions for Disney Plus. <laughs> I don't get it. 
It's important, Wolfie. You'll figure it out. <laughs> but when he got to the battle, the Avengers were winning. Captain America looked so good in those pants. Right. He looked for his fairy god mutant Wolverine, who was... I'm going to Pimps. <laughs> Alright, hey, thanks for coming, Wolvie. It's okay. Yeah, Disney didn't have the rights to him at this point anyway. <laughs> Cinderpool surveyed the battlefield and saw, right there on the stairs of the alien ship, a single glove. He went over, picked that glove up, said hi to this camera. Hi now. <laughs> it was beautiful. Gold encrusted with colorful jewels. There were six of them, not that that matters. <laughs> Said, I wonder who this fits. And put it on. After some buzzing, whirring, and clicking, it was a perfect fit. But then all the Avengers look over and they just start screaming, Cinderpool, no, take that off. You could hurt yourself. Thor started crying. It was terrible. But all together they said, Cinderpool, do not snap. So you know what Cinderpool did. Cinderpool snapped. You're right, child. He snapped physically and mentally. Over and over, too. People are disappearing, reappearing. There's dogs falling out of the sky. Tony Stark said I love you like 3,000 times. It was a bunch. But eventually Cinderpool stopped. Everybody was back. And Cinderpool was the hero who saved the universe. Woo! That I do. <laughs> but then, all the Avengers tackle Cinderpool to the ground, rip the glove off of his hand, blah blah blah. Years later, they remake the film. They AI Tony Stark's hand <laughs> onto my beautiful body, and it becomes the most profitable film in the Feige universe, the FCU. <laughs> but it's okay, because Cinderpool went on to start his own film franchise, which will break box office records. And then they had to invite Cinderpool back to the Avengers Endgame 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the real story of how Cinderpool became the belle of the Avengers Ball. Woo! Thank you all so much for joining me. I'm going to head backstage and check some of my DMs. Those are Deadpool messages. You all have been wonderful. Thank you for joining me for this story time with Deadpool. Woo! I love you, person. All right. Thank you all so much.